Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. So we are continuing our salivary gland session. So this session is about anatomy of various salivary glands. So we learned the major salivary glands, parotid gland, submaxillary gland or submantibular gland and sublingual gland and we have also minor salivary glands. So we will start with the parotid gland. Parotid gland got its name from two words that is para and otic. Para means around, otic is ear. So it is a gland which is present around the ear. That is how it got this name parotid gland, which is the largest salivary gland and it is purely serous in nature that is its secretion can be serous mucus or mixed so it is purely serous in nature it weighs around 15 grams and its superficial portion of the gland lies in front of the external ear you can see the picture here the superficial portion of the gland lies in front of the external ear and its deeper part filling the retromolar fossa so the structures that is arteries veins nerves which are present in and around the parotid gland there are many arteries many veins and nerve is present the arteries are external carotid artery maxillary artery superficial temporal artery and posterior auricular artery as you see here in picture whereas veins the retromandibular vein is formed within the gland by union of two veins one is superficial temporal and maxillary vein and the nerve as we all know the facial nerve enters the gland and divides into terminal branches within the gland so that is why when we give inferior alveolar nerve block by accident if we give before touching the bone and if we inject the solution into parotid gland there will be temporary facial paralysis because parotid gland has facial nerve branches so it temporarily paralyzes the nerve and thereby its supply area so one side will be affected that is a temporary effect so that is a facial nerve which is present within the parotid gland okay next we have parotid duct which is known as tensense duct okay it crosses the muscle which muscle masseter muscle and pierces the buccinator to open at a position that is a papilla at buccal mucosa opposite to maxillary second molar so stenson's duct or parotid duct which is opens opposite to maxillary second molar so this duct measures around 4 to 6 millimeter in length and 5 millimeter in diameter almost a square shaped a small portion of parotid accompanies duct forming accessory gland. Now what is the blood supply? Blood supply is mainly by the external carotid artery and venous drainage to external jugular vein. The lymphatic drainage, the lymph drains into parotid nodes. and from there to upper deep cervical lymph node upper deep cervical lymph node so first it goes to parotid then goes to upper deep cervical lymph nodes now it's about the nerve supply nerve supply we have parasympathetic fibers so this picture will give you an idea parasympathetic fibers first one is a secreto secreto motor that is parasympathetic which has uh, preganglionic fibers that is from inferior salivary nucleus it goes to ninth nerve which will lay in otic ganglion then the post ganglionic fibers which is from the auricular temporal nerve and to the gland so as you see you picture here the preganglionic fibers and the postganglionic fibers finally the gland parotid gland so we have otic ganglion here 
inferior salivary ganglion here so this is a preganglionic and postganglionic fiber whereas the sympathetic nerves are vasomotor and are derived from plexus around the external carotid artery and sensory nerves comes from auricular temporal okay so we have secretor motor that is parasympathetic fibers then sympathetic nerves and sensory nerves that is the nerve supply now let's move on to the submandibular gland submandibular gland they are the second largest okay after parotid they are the second largest gland also called as sub maxillary glands so it is a mixed type of gland which has both serous and mucus but serous is predominating than mucus it is a mixed salivary gland parotid is purely serous so it's superficial part so the picture here is the superficial part this uh, fills the digastric triangle whereas the deeper part it is deep to mylohyoid and superficial to hyoglossus and styloglossus okay so it is deep to mylohyoid and superficial to hyoglossus and styloglossus muscle so its superficial part falls into digastric triangle next about the submandibular duct which is known as wharton's duct wharton's duct so the parotid duct is known as stenson's duct so this is wharton's duct so this runs forward above the mylohyoid muscle lying just below the mucosa and floor of the mouth you can see here so it opens on sublingual papilla which is also called as carancula sublingualis okay carancula sublingualis which is lateral to the lingual frenum so this is here and its blood supply from by the facial artery venous drainage to common facial or lingual vein okay blood supply uh, that is facial artery then venous drainage to common facial vein or lingual vein and the lymphatic drainage to deep cervical and jugular jugular nodes okay similarly we have the nerve supply first one is a secretor motor that is begins near the superior salivary nucleus then the preganglionic fibers which pass through the sensory root of facial nerve that is a geniculate ganglion then cauda tympani then the lingual nerve to reach submandibular ganglion after that postganglionic fibers emerge from the ganglion and enters the submandibular gland so you can see here the lingual nerve uh, submandibular ganglion then we can see the uh, geniculate ganglion so that is preganglionic fibers then comes the postganglionic fibers so we have two ganglion here geniculate ganglion and submandibular ganglion now let's move to the third one that is sublingual gland okay so we learned parotid gland and submandibular gland now we have sublingual gland which is the smallest one okay which is the smallest among three it lies between the floor of the mouth below the mucosa and above mylohyoid muscle you can see here so it is a mixed gland but mucus is predominant in submandibular which is a vice versa serous is predominant than mucus okay so which is known as dex of ribinus which is actually a uh, compilation there is small dex which aggregates to form that is why it is known as dex of ribinus 
okay not a single duct there is a group of duct so ducts of rivenous which open independently along sublingual fold which is opening near the submandibular duct the blood supply is uh, by the sublingual and submental arteries sublingual and submental arteries that is uh, blood supply whereas a uh, lymphatic drainage which is to submandibular lymph nodes submandibular lymph nodes uh, so that is the blood supply and lymph lymphatic drainage okay so this is the third one sublingual gland so that's all for now we finish the anatomy of uh, salivary gland parotid gland submandibular gland and finally the sublingual gland so next session is about uh, the various uh, cells we have uh, serous cells mucous cells uh, and various types of ducts that is uh, we have intercalated ducts and striated ducts and the excretory ducts so all will be uh, dealt in uh, next session okay so i'll come up with that session that is a part 3 of salivary gland hope you understood this uh, anatomy of three major salivary glands okay thank you